Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks for You, and welcome to my kitchen. I have an amazing quick pasta sauce for you to make. This is super weeknight meal stuff when you don't know what to make. And you know what the best part is? My family likes this sauce without any meat. I know some people I can't imagine making a food or dinner without meat. This one works well, and I feed a crowd with this. Here's the thing, when you have a sauce that's just red sauce, that has no chunks, your best thing to serve it on is like an angel hair pasta. Now why you ask? Well let me tell you. Angel hair pasta, when you cook it up and serve it, it stays all intertwined and clumped together. When you serve, let's say like a bow tie pasta, even a fettuccine pasta that's a long wide noodle, they don't cling up as much. So when you put a white sauce on them, let's say, I'm just talking white sauce, it could be a red sauce with ham chunks and peas, but, and you, you put that over like angel hair pasta, guess what happens when you start to stir it up? All those chunks are on the bottom. So you have this ball of pasta with sauce and then chunks on the bottom. And it's hard to serve. And now if you serve that same sauce with a bow tie pasta, this nice flat pieces, what do you think happens to that, those ham chunks and those peas? They just float on the surface of the bow tie pasta. They don't go underneath as much as they do if you're using a thin spaghetti, an angel hair spaghetti, or even a regular cut spaghetti. It's best to keep those chunks with bigger noodles. So this one, we're doing angel hair pasta because we don't have any meat in it. Let's get started on this super simple, amazing dish. I want to tell you a couple things about high quality ingredients. The reason why I came up with this is because I fell in love with a very pricey jarred sauce and realized I can't afford this sauce. Look, I looked on the back and the ingredients were so simple. Tomatoes, olive oil, garlic, and salt. That was it. So I'm going to make it for you guys. All right, my tomatoes. My tomatoes are San Marzano certified tomatoes. You may think, Kathy, all tomatoes are made equal when they're in a can. Now, I don't even like using a lot of canned food, but tomatoes is one of those I will use. These are far superior. I've done the taste test, guys. These are far superior. They cost twice as much. We are gonna start by sauteing up some garlic, just slightly, in some olive oil. Now, I have a quarter cup of olive oil because this is a meal that is drenched in olive oil. And I'm not afraid, but I'm only putting in about a tablespoon or so. And then I'm putting in my homemade minced garlic that you can click above and um, make some of this or below or wherever the card comes up. And I'm putting in two tablespoons. And I might even put in more. Why? Because this is a super garlicky meal. So let that cook a bit. Yum! I'm so excited for this meal. It's so easy. So the canned tomatoes I love and the expensive canned sauce I love are gonna be in the description section below. You just click on the link and boom, you're pulled up to where you can buy them online and help support me. All right, we're gonna add our tomatoes. San Marzano's, the best you can get. Oh, and I put them in this big thing. I was hoping it'd be a little easier to pour, but I don't think so. I was trying to be, you know, like professional or something, but it's gonna be bad no matter what. Okay. Oh, it's gonna splash. Now to help break down these tomatoes some, I like using a potato masher and a knife. Now you can get in there with your hands, make sure your hands are washed and start breaking them down. That's fine too. But to leave them whole, it's gonna take a long time to break them down. So I just like to chop each one. I mean, these are just amazing canned tomatoes. When I found this little secret, 
Oh, it changed my life. Seriously. All right, now we're gonna do the tomato masher. And we're just gonna let this cook down. Now here's the thing with your own sauces. Some people like it really acidic, some people don't. Um, so you have to kind of gauge that. Now, if, you, if it's too acidic, then you can add um, a little sugar to it. And I mean a pinch at a time, not a teaspoon, a pinch of sugar at a time. What happens if you add a teaspoon and you're like, oh my gosh, it's too sweet? Put a teaspoon of vinegar in it at a time to see if you can get cut some of that. Or add some red pepper flakes. The spice with the sweet will kind of make it not so sweet tasting. So I'm not putting red pepper flakes in at this time, but now would be the time if you wanted to put a few red pepper flakes in. It would be super good and it just adds a different element. It's all what you want. So our sauce is great. It is now going to just simmer here on the stove. I'm gonna let it sit for a good, and simmering for a good uh, 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna taste it. And I will see if I need more garlic. At the end, I'm gonna drizzle and just pour in here the rest of my olive oil, which is flavored very nicely. Very nice. And that too is gonna to add some flavor to your meal. One thing I forgot. Normally I do this with two cans and I'm doing it with three. And so I was like, why isn't my flavor coming out? So I ended up putting four tablespoons of my minced garlic in this. Now remember, please watch my minced garlic video. It's amazing. It is so easy to make and helps you so much in the kitchen and tastes far better than that minced garlic in your grocery stores. So I ended up having four tablespoons of minced garlic and two pinches of salt. Now again, you may be like, well, where's the Italian flavor at? Isn't garlic enough Italian flavor? Well, just so you know, we are going to sprinkle some basil on the top. Now how we're going to do this is we're just going to buy some basil, stack it, roll it up, and then we're just going to make nice fine cuts and it's called a chiffonade. And you end up with these beautiful ribbons of basil. And these are going to go on top. So that's enough Italian seasoning that we have garlic and that we have basil. But if you're afraid, and if you're afraid to serve a meal without any meat in it, I will let you put a few cooked Italian sausages in here. I would cook them on the stove first, fry them up, then I would slice them and put them in my sauce. Let me tell you, the Italian flavor that will go through this sauce, it'll make it a much richer sauce. I'm going for a light summer fare with mine. But go ahead and do that. It'll work. Now I'm gonna finish putting the rest of my quarter cup of olive oil in here. And you're like, oh my gosh, you're fattening it up. You damn right I'm fattening it up. Oops, can I say that? You're darn right I'm fattening it up. This is looking super tasty. Mmm. Now I'm gonna try it with my olive oil. Just one last try before I plate it up. Oh, it tastes fresh. Mm. Absolutely amazing. A simple sauce here to impress your friends and family. Oh, my son Sam is gonna be so happy. This is like his new Basil on it that I chiffonaded. Chiffonaded. Is that a verb? <laughs> and some freshly ground Parmigiana Reggiano. Ooh, amazing! Mmm! Mmm, mmm, mmm! Amazing. One more thing. I never, you know how you 
put water in these sloshed around and poured it. I didn't do that. I still have the water in here. So my sauce is uh, the right consistency to me. If you want a thin sauce, then you put some of that water in and as you want to. Now, if you cook with your lid on the entire time, you may not need that at all because all the moisture stays in. But if you have that at a rapid boil for far too long, then a lot of your water is gone and you end up with this thick sauce, you need to put that back in. So that being said, thank you so much for watching Kathy Cooks. Will you please check out all my videos? I'm almost to 100 now. Thank you for supporting me and check my links below and buy some of the goodies that I'm suggesting. Thanks. <laughs>